In lesson 4 on analytical geometry, we are having a look at tangents to a circle. In grade 11 Euclidean geometry, we had a look at a few theorems on tangents and circles, and one of those was that the tangent is always perpendicular to the radius at the touching point. And this is of course still true if we go and draw that circle on the system of axis. So in our sketch, tangent CBD is perpendicular to the radius AB. And this means that the gradient of CD multiplied with the gradient of AB will always be minus 1. And I'm reminding you that the one gradient will then always be the reciprocal of the other along with the opposite sign. So if we, for example, have a gradient of minus a quarter, we know that the other gradient will be positive and the reciprocal of 1 over 4 is 4 or 4 over 1. And that will always give us a product of minus 1. Let's have a look at an example of how we can then use this in analytical geometry. Example 1. Determine the equation of the tangent to the circle at the point 5 minus 6. Here we are asked to determine the equation of a tangent, and a tangent is a straight line in the form mx plus c. If we now go and have a look at the information that was given, the equation of a circle was given here, and from the equation we can immediately read the center and say that it will be at 2 and minus 5. Then we are also given a point on the circle as 5 minus 6. And once again it helps if you can go and draw a picture for yourself. So on my sketch I have a center of 2 minus 5 and I have a touching point of 5 minus 6. We need to calculate the equation of the tangent and therefore we need to calculate its gradient m and its y-intercept c. But on this tangent we only have one coordinate and that means we'll start off focusing on our radius where we have two coordinates. So I'm going to start off by calculating the gradient of my radius by substituting into my gradient formula. So I'm going to start off with my y value, so it's minus 5 minus minus 6, and divide that by the x values of 2 minus 5. And this will give me a gradient of minus a third. And because I know that a tangent is always perpendicular to a radius, I can make the conclusion that the gradient of my tangent will then be the reciprocal of this, which is 3 over 1, and the opposite sign, and that is positive. And this means that I now have part of my equation for my tangent, and that is the m as 3, so it will be 3x plus c, and now I need to calculate the value of c. For this, I'm going to focus on the coordinate that I have on my tangent and substitute that into x and y's place. So my y value becomes minus 6, my x value becomes 5, and then I can solve c. And then the equation of my tangent is then y is equal to 3x minus 21. It is important to realize that we always build on previous knowledge from the previous year. And all of that knowledge is necessary when we approach bigger questions. So let's have a look at an example. Example 2. In the sketch, P is the center of the circle. A, B and C, D are tangents to the circle. And the equation of A, B is given as Y is equal to 2X plus 13. So now the equation of the tangent is given and we will be able to use that in answering the questions. Question A. Determine the equation of AC. Line AC is the diameter of the circle and according to our theorem this will then be perpendicular to the tangent AB. We were given the gradient of AB as 2 and can therefore immediately start saying the gradient of AC is then the opposite sign of this and the reciprocal of 2. Now in our equation we already have the gradient m as minus a half 
and next we'll have to solve C. Once again, we have a coordinate on the line that we are calculating and we can substitute into X and Y. And once we've done that, we can calculate C as a half. Therefore, the equation of AC is Y is equal to minus a half X plus a half. Question B. Determine the coordinates of A. Now, point A is the point of intersection of our tangent and diameter. And to calculate the point of intersection, we put the two equations equal to each other. To solve x, it is now normal algebra, and I'm going to start off by multiplying right through by 2 so that I don't have to work with any fractions. And if I now get all my x's on one side, I'll have 5x is equal to minus 25, and therefore x is minus 5. To calculate the corresponding y value, I can substitute into either of the two straight line equations, and I'm going to substitute into the tangent by changing x to minus 5. Therefore, my y coordinate will be 3. My final answer is then that the coordinates of A are minus 5, 3. Question C. Determine the equation of the tangent CD. So again, we're going to use the theorem that says the tangent is perpendicular to the radius. And we can immediately write down that the gradient of CD will be the opposite sign and then the reciprocal of the gradient of the diameter. Both tangents touch the circle on the same diameter and we could have also said that these two tangents will then be parallel and have the same gradient. In our equation for CD we have our M value and we still need to calculate our C value. But to calculate C, we need a coordinate on this line CD, which we don't have yet. We do, however, know that APC is the diameter, and that means that P is the midpoint between A and C. So here you can choose to use your midpoint formula to calculate the coordinates of C, or you can use the translation from A to P and repeat it from P to C. So our X is started at minus 5 and moved to minus 3. So that's a positive translation of two units. If we repeat that, we'll end at minus 1. For Y, we start at 3 and move down one unit to 2. Another one unit down and we will end at 1. Therefore, C's coordinates will be minus 1, 1, and now we can substitute this into X and Y. Therefore, C will be equal to 3, and the equation of tangent CD is then Y is equal to 2X plus 3. Question D. Determine the equation of the circle. We already know that the standard equation for a circle looks as follows where A and B are the coordinates of the center, and R is the radius. We already have the coordinates of the center of the circle, which is A and B in our equation. And then we need another coordinate on the circumference of the circle to substitute to calculate R, and I'm going to use the C coordinate. You could have also chosen to use A. If we simplify, we'll have 4 plus 1 is R squared, and therefore r squared is 5. So the equation of the circle is then x plus 3 squared and y minus 2 squared is equal to r squared, which is 5. 